Hi there. Hi Rob. G'day. How are you, man? Good. Good to see you. Yeah, good to see you too. Thank you for being with me. Let's talk a little bit about the stuff that people may actually be interested in. Yeah. Um, so two weeks ago, when yeah. I assume we both didn't know that uh, Scott would step down, mm -hmm. would you have bet rather on Scott or Mike to step down first? <laughs> I took it down. Well, I tied it down. I never gave it a thought. Okay. It, yeah. was, it was surprising yeah, to me. Yeah, same, same here. Right? Surprising, I, you know like, them, oh, wow. You, that's... you know them both personally. Like, yeah, when they started yeah. the company, you were already in contact, right? Uh, no, I, I met them shortly after they yeah. started, but within... And in Sydney. Yeah. yeah. Like, you know, months after they and started. you kind of, like, moved with Atlassian to America, right? Yeah. So we moved to the U.S. to help build out the ecosystem in the U.S. after we were doing it in... When I joined time. and we received yeah. our first awards from Atlassian, yeah. you were front and center with your guitar on the Atlassian Oh, 2011? Stage. Yeah. Did you film that? No, I, was, I, I look, should have. I'm looking for film I would be able to, to uh, <laughs> sell this video to you now. But yeah, I should have. That was 2011. That was the start. That was the guitar. That was the start of the guitar giveaway. Because the expo was upstairs, and we needed a way to get people upstairs. So we said, well, you can win these guitars. And it worked. We had the COO of Zendesk, Zach Erlocko, who's a good friend. Uh, join us and we did that and um, ever since then every summit we've done a, or team we've done a guitar giveaway and we I, love learned, it. I learned from Rob that uh, so he had such an ingenious way of describing what their social partner does so he used IKEA and told them oh. look you can use did you like that absolutely um, so just to tell the story yeah. quick I heard your story so long kind of like so you, you buy a furniture at IKEA, you mount it, and you're so proud. Maybe everything's not screwed correctly and whatever. But if you know, and you said, like, if you want to now mount a thousand of these chairs or tables, that's more difficult, and you won't have fun. And that's where we come in. That's where yeah. process and all yeah. the experience that we have. Uh, I, I, learned, I, I understood that. That was kind of worked, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's, um, I don't know whether now it's that kind of do-it-yourself. And but between, it's between then and now, you also told me, oh, at last, yeah. we're going to do Facebook, and you're building this intranet yep. based on conference. That's a fax machine, yeah. very old style, but you're still here. You're still yeah. here. And, and my fax machines are still doing millions. Uh, so, so that's uh, when you said resilient business, I thought, oh, yeah. Good so, business, man. You're, you're, Rob, Rob never, you're there. never managed to leave because they're no. just too sticky here. Yeah. There's a lot of good opportunity and a lot of um, good innovation. Um, we got approached by Facebook back then in 2016 to help them build the ecosystem for workplace. Do you also help Zendesk? We, we've helped a number of companies. Zendesk, MuleSoft, Okta, a whole bunch in various different ways, either running support building training, building apps. Um, we're doing a couple of others now in the AI space. You're um, one of the last men standing here, not sold your company to VC capital yet. I, I don't think there's much VC in this space. It's mostly private equity. Oh, I, I yeah. don't even get the, the differentiation. OK. Um, but I'll, I'll pick yes. that up. Yes, there's difference. No, I, I think um, it, it's natural in an ecosystem that at some point in time, Money comes. Yeah, you know, funds that have money look for investments and say, wow, this is a great opportunity to take a bunch of businesses, smash them together and make them bigger, and then make them more efficient and then sell it to somebody else. And that's, that's the game of private equity. And that's happening in our space. And it's, you know, it's a wave that will come in and a wave that will go out. Because that's- Will it go does. out? It, it does, because in private equity, funds have a time frame, And so, the whatever that time frame of that fund is, five years, seven years, it has to give a return back to its investors. So the exponential growth, as soon as it doesn't uh, happen anymore. Uh, and not even that, maybe, maybe just the end of time of, of the fund, or it could be um, uh, an opportunity, whoever, whoever the owners are, right? So a number of companies in our ecosystem have been bought out mm -hmm. by other shareholders, and they can decide to do whatever they want to do. Um, you know, I don't necessarily 
I, I think it's important for customers to know who owns the company that they're working with. And it's important for employees to know who they're working for. Oh, even more so, yeah. Even more for, so. For the customers, then, uh, there's always an app uh, nowadays that could potentially do a similar thing. But um, yeah, I think apps for the employee, thing, well, that's on, yeah. way more direct. Yeah, and uh, uh, you know, it's not, it's, not, it's not good or bad, just like any wave in the ocean isn't good or bad, but it is a wave, and the next wave will come. That's too generic for me. Right. I think uh, like if I see some of those companies that have uh, been bored, laying off 20, 40, 60 people, I feel that this is, yeah, I don't know. It's, they, they probably call it streamlining or whatever, yep. but uh, economies of scale and we're getting rid of redundancies, but uh, ultimately, those were profitable working companies. Maybe. That, uh, Maybe. I mean, there's assumption. I don't know. They're, they're private companies. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. For for yeah. some, it, yeah. it, it's a speculation. Yeah. Oh, that, I mean, it's it's a different way of business. Like you and I are bootstrap companies. Yeah, absolutely. And we we really prioritize our teams and prioritize what we do. And we have a long term, 28 years, 24 years. We're, we're we have a longer term vision for what we're building, and. Um, you know, just doesn't fit that capitalistic transactional mindset, right? But that's it's legal. It's fine. You know, just it, that's just the way it is, right? So let's talk a little yeah. bit about um, your company. What, what is Service Rocket doing today? What are we doing today? Um, for the for the market, we're focused on being uh, the most reliable partner we can be for our customers and and for our, so that our is partners. So service, partners, services, services yeah, and services also and apps? Um, we have a team that's building a bunch of cloud apps. Um, for us, really, it's just getting better at the basics, right? I think if the analogy is basketball or sport, we're just really focusing on the basics and getting better and better Crossing at what we're the doing. Ball and yeah, I don't know, this is shot percentages. Is, um, I, I think services is a. Is a I've heard that three pointers are a thing now. <laughs> yeah. So I think it's just you know just being consistent, and that the, there's nothing fancy, nothing flashy. I think we, we just launched our new old brand. Yeah, you you right? have the rocket. We went we 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 we've kind of refreshed the brand, fixed the website, you know, just kind of turning things up. I think we're right now this conference is great for us because we're. We, we fixed the identity, well, we updated the identity, updated the website, and we didn't touch the messaging yet. Mm -hmm. And there was a lot of toing and froing. do we get the messaging done in time for the conference? And we actually decided, no, let's leave it. No one's gonna decide to buy or not with us because of the words on the website this week. But with all the announcements and all the things happening this week, that actually provides really good input to then start crafting and mm -hmm. updating the messaging, right? Yeah. And also Atlassian just released their results last week. A lot of good information in that release. There's a lot of information flowing about what's coming up. So you're actually reading that? Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, I no, I, I, I'm, running a, a, I'm running a program right now with a, a number of other partners, like younger partners, kind of teaching them the basics, right? Like, hey, you have to listen to the Q and A calls, understand what's going on, you know. And but Michael Brooks is uh, re refreshingly honest and direct in his calls. Mike's I, I always, I, I think Mike is always like that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, um, you also experience uh, within Atlassian a lot of, um, yeah, like messages get tweaked and. Uh, Not so much compared to like. Um, other other companies, I think. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I didn't mean it like in a in a mean way. It's just like um, things in your organization. It's, uh, you uh, think twice yeah. what you say and how you say it, and then out comes a very polished. Uh, yeah, I think it's actually pretty raw. If you listen to other calls from other companies, I think the Alaskan one is pretty much spot on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I was not talking about the um, the investors call. Um, oh, okay. Um, let's and then, so you, you just did some announcement with Chris. Is he here? 
Did Chris come? No, he's not. Okay. But he, and, he's and you running are, the studio. He's running you, the studio. Oh, yeah. there you go. You, you can uh, Allow, him so, and he'll answer. So, hey, Chris, this is blue. Are they, all of your videos, I noticed they're all green. You have this green look. All the videos uh, with him. Yeah, that could be. Uh, it's it's our studio. It could. Can, do you want it to be blue the next time? No, it's just green was an interesting color. Is that your company color? Yes. It is. Okay. Yeah, it is. And you're in orange. Oh, that's strong. Your drawing. Okay. So, uh, Steven is actually green. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So that makes sense. Yeah. Well, this is blue. I. There we go. Do I, you like? I've, it? I've really no problem. The next time we're gonna record <laughs> something. I'll, I'll make it blue. Make it and, blue. Yeah, and now I, I like I like I like the way that you guys banter a little bit. So, but I could join you, and we could do the really good, bad, and ugly, and we can flip a coin to see who is the good, who is the bad, and who is the ugly. I I bet that you have the willingness to make fun of yourself on a level every day. That would uh, that would match totally. this. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll I'll keep that in mind. Um, so for. I heard this program for young founders. That's interesting. Um, if I am building an app right now and I'm struggling to get traction with that, um, what's something that you can recommend to people? Maybe let's pick one thing on a strategic level, so high level, and one thing that is very operational. You know, our team just randomly. We do, we, does yeah, we, we, we do a lot of hack week type work. Mm -hmm. And I think the, the struggle we have, and I would think it's common for everybody, is getting from zero to one, yeah. getting that initial piece. And what I, what I try and ask my team to do, like an engineer will have an idea and do a hack week project and hack something. And I'm like, well, if you're gonna do a hack week project, can you involve a customer? Mm -hmm. And at the end of the week, have it deployed, right? So effectively, can you sell the hack week as professional services? Even if you don't charge, solve a real problem that will go into production that you will then get feedback on. Versus, I'm going to hack because I had a great idea and I do a demo day, I make this a demo awesome. video. But, I'm, I'm thinking, is but, but, but then after that, it just kind of dies, right? Yeah. So now I'm like, no, no, we have a team of solution architects. Their job is to, find, is to find problems. And then the hack week needs to apply to that problem. There's just zero to 0 0.2 or zero. There's a little bit. And if the customer manages to give you feedback and you can do a second iteration, you're on your way to actually turning the, the engine, right? Yeah, um, I like that. So, so like, I did too, uh, too often. It's thing of doing MVP. It's not just something that you, get, you could ship, but the, the you should ship. ship and make it in, like, get it in production. So that's the, it's kind of funny because in the professional services world, you will put stuff into production really quickly. Mm -hmm. In the hack week, it doesn't. But your coding quality is higher than your typical professional services coding. Mm -hmm. So why don't you smash the two ideas together bring the hack week to the corporate, solve the problem. If you can't get them to want to deploy it, that's a bad problem to spend time on, Okay. I think. Give me, um, Anyway, I'm still not sure whether this was strategic or operational because it's been kind of- I'm like making this up as I go, by yeah. the way, please soon. Um, <laughs> give us something about marketing or sales. So uh, how do hmm. I get more reviews? How do I get in contact with my evaluators and turn them into paying customers? Um, how do I create money out of this app that I create? That's a lot of things. No, I, I, do, I just want to do you, give um, you a room, give me something out of that room. All right, so we, we, uh, we sold apps before there was a marketplace. And um, this was back in 2012. We had scaffolding, reporting. We had the. Oh, I remember going through your website. And it, we had it, this. It, it took a long time until you adopted the um, marketplace. The marketplace. Yeah, yeah, because it, 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 it wasn't really ready. And, yeah. Um, oh, we, we ended up moving. The. So we we had open source, and it was costing us a bomb to maintain it. And so we we made them commercial. We called it a graduation sale. We are graduating the apps. Congratulations, we're graduating the apps to commercial. And then we gave everybody 40% off. A new price that didn't exist. It's pretty cheap. 
And um, so we get, so that was the graduation process. And mm -hmm. we thought we were gonna get lots of blowback. We had people internally saying, this is pointless, 99 bucks or 100 bucks is nothing. And the money started trickling in. So, and then the only complaints we had were from nonprofits. Nonprofits were complaining. I, I, uh, 99 bucks. I think the most expensive thing was 300 bucks. So I said, right. Good. Give us a reference. Like, so I said, step one, love our app. If you don't love it, don't use it. Step two, give us a reference. Huh? Review on the market post. Yeah. Right? Show us how, tell us how you're using it. Once you do that, step three, send us the link and we'll give you a free license. Right? So we turned early on all of the nonprofit into reviews. Huh? And then when they needed to review, we didn't ask them. I think for a while we did, and we said it's pointless asking for a review every year. Give me something else, 2024. Um, so, but I mean, like- Marketing you, you, in 2024. Marketing in 2024, uh, I think is about actually being simple. Mm -hmm. There is so much noise out there, and I, I just think you have to, you have to do what nobody else is doing. So, we did animals cartoons in like 2008 or seven, and no one did it then. What, what I did when we did that branding is I put our logo on all these different themes, and the one that looked odd, I picked. Like if I put IBM everywhere, and I was like, IBM doesn't fit cartoons. Okay, that's us, right? Type thing. Um, so if I'm looking at the marketplace now, there is a lot of stuff there. And so I would be thinking of how do I, how do I look different? Okay. And I think there's, I think there's, the market, I think there's marketplace fatigue. Customers have fatigue. Like, okay, so many different apps. Oh, Chris is telling me uh, all the time, and I, I love it. Um, an app is something that customers think Jira could should do out of the box. And most of the time, yeah. It's, uh, Unless it's a bridge or a tollway, right? Which is a connector. Yeah, so, but not um, them. They think, oh, Elasticsearch built it. Or the other guys. Yeah, yeah maybe. I, it's, I mean, it's less. Uh, companies will pay for connectors. Mm. Um, that's kind of a known thing. Whereas, yeah, a lot of the other ones are like internal features, and every year you run the risk of being replaced by something. Internal. It's in the product or whatever it is, right? So. Um, oh, that's yeah, a lot. yeah. So. Um, I think today there was some stats as like 9,000 private apps. And I think the private app market is underserved. Yeah. I think um, in the old world, you had a lot of these horizontal, what I'll call horizontal apps that run scripts and do things that filled the void of the old platform. Mm -hmm. And the new platform doesn't have that void, but people want to copy data center apps and put them in cloud, but the the gaps aren't there, so the APIs aren't there. Therefore, those horizontal scripting apps aren't there. Um, so I think there's opportunity to think about, on a per customer basis, what is the use case that's preventing you moving, right? And in many cases, I think these, these could be private apps that do a specific thing. And I think large enterprises, some interesting conversations I've had this is a hypothetical. I believe that some enterprise customers would prefer that a services provider builds for them the custom functions that they need. I call them functions, not apps. Because mm -hmm. like Chris said, those should appear in the product. I would be willing to bet at some stage there is an intersection where a large enterprise customer would rather a solution partner or their own team build on Forge the functions that they're missing and have the code checked in and maintained and not have to pay a recurring fee per user 
Yeah. And over time, if, if the functionality comes in the product, they just remove it. Okay. So just think if someone's bought, you know, 10, 15, like, and they're, they're trying to deploy thousands of users on it, if that app is just doing some small things internally, I think there is a, there is a business case for that. Um, so, so interesting. Yeah, anyway. Do you know, like, they are gonna sweep us out in a couple of minutes. Yes. And I, I need to find a way to, <laughs> to stop and talking while I could be listening for hours. Uh, so thank you yeah. so much for sharing. Anyway, uh, I'm, so just, I'm just spitting out uh, what thoughts. Is it, um, so you have been sharing a lot of viewer knowledge. What is it that people that watch this video, or maybe I hear, um, could help you learn or... Ooh. Um, I, I'm, I'm curious what people really feel about what apps are exciting them. You know, what apps actually make you feel good? Mm -hmm. Not feel like, oh, okay, I have to pay for this as a necessary evil. Like, what is genuinely exciting you? Like, when I walk around here, what apps actually make me feel like, wow? Oh, this, uh, this right? thing is... Uh, and you remember, if you go back 10 years ago, we would walk around and see innovations. Yeah. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I haven't looked in detail, but I was like, oh, there's a nice new calendar thing and a backing up data and a, it, it's very infrastructure-ish, or again, small feature-ish. I haven't seen yet, and I haven't been through everything, and I hope I find it. What gets me thinking differently about business or my business? We got a review two weeks ago where someone said, oh, this should, uh, I, I don't understand. So that was the ending of the review was, I don't understand why this is not a paid app. And that, that really- um, That's good. Uh, uh, unfortunately, that wasn't a wow me. thing. Like the that was an absolute mm -hmm. wow thing for me Good. because um, the the app was always built to become a paid app one day, and um, actually we we turned it to what be is the app? a did it checklist. So okay. um, we turned it to become a paid app like last week. Okay. So kind of like fulfilling this uh, <laughs> this wish of the customer. Is it a fax I, machine or is it no? Yeah, it's, we only do fax machines. <laughs> it's a checklist app. Check, check, check. Like the yet another check step, you could say. But um, check it out. It's uh, you know the, you know the one thing the one thing I'm really excited about, and I spent some time with Joe earlier today, is um, Loom. I think Loom has the power to remove a lot of shitty work conversations from chat. Yeah. And At make meetings and make chat more social and fun and keep work and meetings I think, streamlined. I think meetings so is I think I, so I'm, I'm, but, uh, The biggest thing I'm actually excited about is Loom. So, yeah, I agree. There we go. Rob, thank you so much for Hey man, time. thanks. Cool. Please, none of this is business advice. Oh, oh. <laughs> you Pontificating to, stories. Do you have to do disclaimer. disclaimers? Yes, yeah, so I'm, I'm just a nice uh, There's this America here. Yes, So you always right. have disclaimers. There we go. How can people reach you? You can reach me on LinkedIn. Yeah, I reach him on LinkedIn. Yeah, that's enough. And uh, you can Robert me. Castaneda, Service Rocket. That's it. Cool. Awesome. Thanks. Give us a shout out. Thanks. We, we sh shook hands already. Yeah. Nothing to do anymore. I'm Perfect. End this.